Welcome to Out of the Question, a podcast that looks behind some common questions and uncovers the question behind the question while providing real solutions for biblical world and life view. Your host is Andrea Schwartz, a teacher and mentor and founder of the Chalcedon Teacher Training Institute. Thank you for listening in to this episode of the Out of the Question podcast. I don't have to tell my listeners that there are a number of bad players at the highest levels in our society. Their goal seems to be to destroy innocence in children, among other things. They tend to be patient in achieving their outcomes because they bank on any opposition to remain silent for fear of being ridiculed or singled out. Today I have with me Pastor Brooke Mose of Calaveras Presbyterian Church, located in the Sierra foothills of California. This region is long known for family-friendly events like the annual frog jumping contest that takes place during the county fair. It's just the sort of place that irritates those who wish to see the traditional family and what we call the American way of life dismantled and destroyed. Many believers do an amazing job of outlining the problems we face, but too few have an organized plan to combat them. Not so Pastor Mose and his congregation. So the question I'm posing today is this. Is there a godly, biblical way to oppose evil? Thanks for joining me today, Brooke. Glad to be here. Share with our listeners the situation you faced in your county and how you chose to deal with it. Yeah, well, like you say, Calaveras County is just an amazing bastion of goodness. It has been. It's felt like it's been just a a, a bubble in California, a protected bubble. We were, I was down uh, performing my son's wedding in Arizona and just this uh, last week. And then a, a friend mentioned on the drive back up that there was going to be a, a drag queen event in our little small town of Murphy's here. And if you've been to Murphy's, you know, it's, it has the tagline, the queen of the Sierras. It's just this beautiful, idyllic little uh, destination. I mean, it's the sort of place where, you don't even you don't even lock the doors of your house. Lots of people don't. I'm not even sure exactly where our, our key is, right? It's just a spectacular place. But yeah, there's a, an activist group from Modesto who was uh, planning to come up and host a drag queen show at one of the restaurants up there. And um, I don't know. It just uh, that just that just struck us at our church that that cannot be. And so we recognize that, you know, we're, we're warring against the principalities, against the, the, the heavenly powers, the dark heavenly powers. And so we just made a plan that we were going to show up there. We were going to pray. We were going to sing Christmas carols. We were going to proclaim the gospel of the king on a speak, on a speaker system. And we were just going to talk with anyone who wanted to talk who was coming by. And, uh, it, it ended up being a fairly intense, but very beautiful, evening and um it's it's still uh quite quite a buzz in the community here on facebook and in personal conversations so anyway, right now was, you yeah, grew up I, in that area correct yeah i um i grew up uh first years in montana and then in sweden but i've been here in calaveras county other than grad school since 1987 i think so long before there were even stoplights in the county right long, right i remember yeah and you're a husband and a father of 10, is that correct? Uh, 12, 12 children, um, and then we have uh, three others that are living with us on a semi-permanent basis. So it's a busy household. Yes, it is. And so I imagine you're pretty well known in the community. I mean, people know that, you know, when the Moe's family shows up. Yes, yeah, yeah. People recognize our, our vans driving around. Yeah, we've been here for a while. Right. So. Oftentimes, people get hung up in terms of standing for what God's standard of righteousness is and say things like, well, you know, we have free expression and we shouldn't judge other people. You and your congregation didn't look at it this way, did you? No, um, definitely not. We we are reminded um, what man's original call to do in the was in the garden, Madden's original call in the garden. You know, God placed him in this garden city of Eden. And he said, look at the rest of this world. The rest of this world is a wilderness. 
And what I want you to do is I want you to extend this garden that I have created. And I want you to extend this garden throughout the world in the same way that the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters of chaos in the beginning um, and, and built something beautiful, you know, man being made in the image of God and man um, having that recreative spirit and the gifts that God has given him. God says, you need to go into the darkness of the wilderness and extend the this this beautiful garden city. And so, no, that is very much the view of our church, uh, that that we, we have a mission, and our mission is to proclaim the gospel of the king, the fullness of the kingdom, um, the beauty of the Christian family, the beauty of the church family. Um, we're, we're very excited that God places us in such a time. All right, so the restaurant or pub, whatever it was, that decided to host this, do you think it was a miscalculation on their part, or do you think that they were pandering to a group of people that maybe intimidated them into saying yes. What do you think the circumstances were? Because they had to know the populace in their area so that this wasn't going to go over well. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it's hard to know another person's heart, but you can kind of do some detective work and you can kind of, you know, read what's going on. There were a number of people who uh, commented on their restaurant's page I myself was one of them, uh, very kind comments and just reminding them what this county was like and how this was you know, likely to hurt the business and such. And they would promptly delete all such comments, you know, and it kind of made it look like the whole county was was in support of it. And and so, you know, I, I made another post just uh, about that. And that one has kind of exploded and been shared and reshared and hundreds and hundreds of comments and and um it's it's clear that the the county is not behind that and i think it was equally equally clear being there that evening that this wasn't a question of being intimidated into doing it this was a um a a calculated move i think to bring this ideology there something strange is happening in this little town of murphy's you know just at halloween here we had uh they they the whole town uh, was taken over by an event called the Witch Walk, and there are a few businesses that are um, very occultic in nature, tarot cards, and and I, from my understanding, is there's uh, a, a pretty large uh, Wiccan establishment that is up here as well, and it just feels like, in particular, in Murphy's, like there's a little pointed effort to to, to claim that area of Calaveras County. And like I said, I've I've often described Calaveras County and Tuolumne and Amador as kind of like the, you know, the pass of Thermopylae, California being uh, <laughs> in large part the hordes of the Persians trying to come into, you know, civilized territory. And you remember how the, the 300 held that. And I've always thought, you know, this this little pass needs to be held because we know how like the darkness of California wants to spread to the rest of the country. And so many Christians will leave California and my thought is no, you don't, you, you can't leave, you can't leave the front lines or the front lines just shift somewhere else. And so it just feels to me like there is some sort of a, of a pointed thrust into these pristine little counties. And it's, 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 it's feels like it's go time for the church. Yes. So, um, what was the reaction you got from the establishment? Did they call out the police on you and say you're ruining our business? What, what was their reaction? No, um, and in fact, the, the owner, um, came out and he, he videoed and, uh, he was actually fairly polite about it. I could see he was irritated, but he was fairly polite. Um, many of the other people, patrons and such, there were, you know, people dance, uh, dancing up as prayer was going on, waving their middle fingers and, uh, and just, um, you know, proclaiming Jesus is dead and doesn't exist. Um, some of the drag queens came out while we were, you know, singing grandparents singing with their children and they just were kind of dancing in the middle of the street in the background and trying to film it. So there's, I would say the, the, the participants there, some of them were, were, were aggressive in that regard. There were some beautiful, beautiful moments. There was, uh, one man and we, we'll edit up the video and get it out there eventually. But um, one man and I who had a probably a half hour long conversation and we're going to be getting together and hopefully he's going to be coming to church. But you know, this was a, 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 a gay man and a Hindu and just, we had a really beautiful discussion. So there were some beautiful moments and there were some not so beautiful moments. And it's pretty obvious from the video, which side loves and which side loves deeply. 
and which side is very, very aggressive and very intolerant. So did you do any sort of prep work with those who were going to come out and be a witness for Christ to have them guard their reactions that we don't operate the way these folks operate? And and so is that a challenge to not respond in kind? Um, I think... I think that always is, is a challenge. You know, there's, yes, uh, for sure. And I, I did do some prep, prep work with the people. Um, we asked for quite a lot of prayer and it was given from a number of churches in the community. Kind of, I, I spoke with, uh, Pastor Zach Morgan, who's a friend of mine from Apolo- Apologia Church and just kind of talked about what the parameters that they use when they're going out to witness at the abortion mills. And, and we just, I just made sure that the people understood that we, are we are there for lost souls we are not we are not there to break down these 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 people per se we're we're there to break down the spirit that has them enthralled and um and yeah just truth speaking from the scripture truth speaking in love bold but i you know i've tried to prep them you need to be very bold because you can always run the risk of not being bold enough and you're not proclaiming the gospel and you can run the risk of being too aggressive and, you know, passerbys, you know, you're not winning them with that sort of a rhetoric either. It's a, it's a, it's a fine line to walk and it needs to be walked in the spirit of Christ and with the covering of prayer. But yeah, there's, I'd say in this day and age, one of the main thing I was stressing to them is there is a need, there is a need to be bold, right? We're, we're so, we're too easily cowed and think, well, we just, we need to get along and, um, no. There are some things that are just so abjectly evil. We do not need to get along and we need to be bold in our proclamation. So a lot of people criticize this movement as going after children. Well, clearly, if you're going to be in a pub in a a town like Murphy's, you're not specifically going after children there. Um, Do you think that the strategy of these folks was to get a foothold and then make something that most people quite frankly, would find repulsive, more acceptable, that the more you see it, the more you'll say, well, um, live and let live. Yeah, well, in in terms of this uh, pub, it's it's not um, what you'd think of in terms of like a a bar. This is the Murphy's Irish pub. And it is it is a family establishment. You can you can go in there and have a meal and they're they're seating lighted seating outdoors. It's quite quite a lovely little establishment. Um, And so it is more of a of a family restaurant. Um, and as I expected, that is exactly what happened. It didn't stay in the pub, which has big glass windows as well. And it's six o'clock on Friday on a Thanksgiving weekend. So there are children and, you know, it's a big tourist town and it didn't stay in the pub. They were out in the streets. They made a big arrival. Um, it, and basically uh, even on their own, uh, uh, Facebook page, they were suggesting that children stay away. And I'm thinking to myself, children stay away from the streets of their own town at 6 p.m. I don't think so. Right. Um, so, you know, there, there was definitely, there is definitely an attempt. And really, if you read, if you re- read queer authors themselves on this subject, they know exactly what drag queen events are about. Drag queen events are about breaking down boundaries and presenting something that is so egregiously, extremely out there um, that, that your mind just kind of snaps and you just kind of get and enter a paradigm where I guess anything goes. Mm-hmm. And and so anytime that we allow those sort of things to happen in our community, that's really what's happening. It is the breaking down of boundaries. And if you know anything about long term goals of predatorial grooming, you know, one of the one of the first things that a predator tries to do is they try to break down boundaries. And and I, I mean, it's just it, it, that's intensely what and they know that's that this is what they're doing. They're trying to break down boundaries. Now, this is an observation I've had. I don't know if other people will agree with me, but um, when you look at how, and I'll use the word grotesque, seeing these men dressing up as women, but they're not even dressing up as women because most women don't dress or use the kind of adornment that these people do. I was recently at someone's house and their children were watching cartoons. Now, I've had kids who grew up and we don't have cartoons on in our house. But it struck me that a lot of the cartoon characters look a lot like these people who dress up in this way. 
And I'm wondering if that's part of how the ra- the road was paved for people, especially children, to gravitate toward this. Do you think there's some credibility in that perspective? No, I think that's that's probably true. I've I've often thought that um, you know, when I look at uh yeah, so much of the media that young people consume. I, I even think of that when I watch some commercials that are coming by. I'm thinking like this is so disjunct and flashed. It's it's just it, the intent is just to to break your mind out of normalcy. Notice this. Notice me. Notice this. And uh I yeah, I, I think the times that I am turning on a lot of cartoons or anime or I'm 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 thinking to myself I I, I do see a pattern here. And again, that's how ban- boundaries are slowly broken down over time. You just, you take a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. Yeah, I would say that's a general thrust of uh, the media that the children of America consume. Yes. Right. Which is a good reason to restrict it. But then you run the scenario where if parents are saying no and the culture is saying yes, then if children are going to quote unquote rebel against their parents, then this inroad has been made. Yeah. I'm curious, Brooke, did yeah. um did other people you didn't expect come out and support your efforts that evening? You know, it was it, it wasn't maybe maybe widely publicized enough that we were even going to do it. I would say online there have been same thing as what happened with uh with COVID. Online, I've been very pleased to see the amount of support and surprised by certain people who support it and conversely shocked by other people who found it very, very offensive. Um, I was, I, like, I really didn't think you would have been (laughs) against this side. So yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting when things like this happen, how it kind of fleshes out in the community. You begin to realize, um, who the people are who are serious about standing in the gap against evil and who just doesn't care. Or in fact, maybe on that side, it's a, it's always a surprise to me. Right. You have to wonder sometimes how do people define evil? You, you got to start with the definition of right and wrong. And I guess in a, at a time where so many people have gone through the state school system, what you did looks intolerant when in actual fact, what's gone on for decades within the schools and in the media was an intolerance for another perspective as evidenced by the fact that your comments got removed from a Facebook page. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's part of the reason why we recorded every minute of it. And I would recommend anyone out there who is, um, who is going to stand at a, at an abortion mill or is going to uh, stand against a, a drag performance or what have you, I'd recommend you do record every single minute of it. Um, because now we have footage and there are many who would assume that what we were doing was intolerant. But when you actually see the footage, you're going to, you will see a very, very different story. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely recommend, uh, document everything that you do. If you or your church are going to head out there and do something. Were any of the people who showed up from your congregation, did they look like they were experiencing shell shock? You know, the amazing thing is I would say, I would say after the fact, the exact reverse, there were a few, um, and, and these are even really strong, strong men who said, I just had to step away for a minute and just take a deep breath and just step across the street and watch it. Cause you know, be, between the smell of the pot smoke that was being blown at us and the blaring music trying to, you know, shout, shout down our singing and praying, um, the, the, the lights, the, yeah, it, it was, it was, it was a little intense and people had to step back for a second, but then they came right in. But the beautiful thing is when it was done, everybody was, we came to my house and we had tri tip and we had basically a, a, a party and everybody was just like, um, Oh man, I cannot wait to do that again. Even my little 10 year old was just like, when can we do that again, dad? I want to get out there again. So it was, right. it, yeah, it was very, um, it was a great feeling. Yeah, and I think a situation like that will reveal that the two different sides, they don't have a lot in common. And I appreciate the fact that you will look at these people, however nasty they are, however, you know, reprobate they are, they're still image bearers of God. And yeah. so having an opportunity to take someone 
And you just don't know if this is the time of their visitation. So when they see yeah. people showing up and children um, and, and and caring as opposed to I, I'm sure it didn't look like a football game or a basketball game. This was a very intense thing. And I think pro- I, the video I saw lots of different age groups there as your congregation. So it isn't just the, you know, old folks and it isn't just the, uh, you know, the, the people who would know from a biblical perspective that this wasn't right. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's one thing for an event like this, you know, we, we thought about what age person should come. And in general, you know, I have friends who have done intense witnessing in San Francisco for some 20 years, and they don't usually go to events like this down there with anyone who's less than 18 years old. But um knowing that this was Murphy's and knowing that we had somewhat control of the environment, um, I, I, for my own children, kind of thought, okay, which ones do I think would be um, could handle this and could be blessed by this. So, you know, that mind, that had to, that thought process had to happen. So it wasn't just any age child that came, but we really did want to have children there. And the reason being is this, you know, for, for many years, I was a professional violinist and I was in that scene. So I had students at the university and I had colleagues who were um, homosexuals. And one thing that I can absolutely say about uh, that society is that the vast, vast majority come from broken homes, come from abuse, come from a complete lack of family. So one thing I prepped our people for is I I wanted them to be there to show, to give an example of holy family, just an example of family. And, and, uh, and then to treat those who would talk with us, um, as though they potentially would someday be family members. You never, you never know how you could have someone in front of you flashing the middle fingers, screaming F bombs at you, dressed in a crazy way. And this may be someone that if the spirit of God grabs them will be standing with you at the next event. In fact, we had, we had some former homosexuals there with us who were just proclaiming the word powerfully and beautifully and are very very dear friends and are married with children now and you know, just so our one of our main goals was just to go there and even if nothing else happened stand as a family and sing christmas carols right and right. and in in the case of this one individual um which you would you would will see eventually on the video uh, he was really 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 drawn to that in fact let me see if i can really quickly pull up the text that he sent me afterwards. If I, if I can indulge me for just a second. Sure. Here. Sure. Um, okay. So here was, here was, here's from um, a gay man who's a Hindu. And he said, Hey, Pastor Brooke, it was an amazing evening with you and your beautiful family and friends. Yes. Let's get together and enjoy another wonderful conversation. So, you know, when you, when people are screaming online that, Oh, what an intolerant group. That's just not what was happening right there. It was, right. It was, it was, it was family seeking to find their lost family members. Yes. So people often talk about the slippery slope. You allow a certain thing to go unchallenged and then before long, something much worse. Do you think that there's also a slippery slope in terms of bringing righteousness to a topic or an environment so that people who were so hard fast in their views on what they considered right or their rights, that they see things like you guys were putting forth there and showing up and singing Christmas carols and you didn't have big mega horns saying you're all going to go to hell. As a matter of fact, you were singing the message of salvation. Do you think there could be a reverse slippery slope? Uh, I mean, if, uh, if, uh, if a conservative group got out there and just uh, brought dishonor upon? upon no, the just the opposite. When you don't bring dishonor, oh, and what you're doing is you're proclaiming things that there are people who are watching, maybe not the the ones who are being most vocal or most demonstrative, but, you know, Oftentimes, people go along with a point of view because nobody's given them right. talking points or a perspective to say, this isn't right and this is why. I'm wondering if you think that um, another way to put it is that the more Christians are out there proclaiming the truth and putting light into darkness, that uh, that's when you see a lot of positive gain for the kingdom. Yeah, so I've, absolutely. I mean, 
his word will not return void. And yes, you know, there's, there is always that bystander effect. You know, I, I forget the girl's name in um, New York many years ago. It was Kitty something, but she was being stabbed to death and murdered out in the street and screaming and people threw open their windows and they yelled at the attacker, but nobody went down to help her and he left and then he came back and stabbed her some more and the same thing happened and then he left and he came back and he ended up killing her and no one would just go down. And we know from human psychology that if, if one person had gone down there, the street would have been flooded with good people and she would be alive. And really that's a, that's a great metaphor for this sort of warring for the kingdom. You just need a few, a few bold Christians who are going in the spirit of Christ. They're going in love and other Christians like, yeah, we can do this. They'll come as well. So it, you know, it's, we should never, um, we should, we, we, we should always look Look with joy upon the beginnings of small things. If there's only a few people who show up to something like this, more will come. But someone has to start doing it. Someone has to get out there. Someone has to be have thick enough skin to to um, take a lot of hatred from people around. Maybe lose some friends um, and and just move forward. Someone has to start it. So the people who were behind this event and participating. Was it your observation they were local people or they were sort of bust in for this? They, um, they, there were, there were people who were observing who were local. The actual, uh, drag queen show, the retinue that was up here, it's from an act- activist group in Modesto. So they were definitely bust in. These were <laughs> local drag queens. There's nothing like that around here. But, you know, again, such a, such a, um, out there, strange, you know, like, like like you can't look away from a car accident kind of a thing. There were people who were showing up just like, wow, what in the world? And then there are other people who were showing up just clearly totally bought into the agenda and 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 trying to make it a big event. So yeah, yeah, it's it's the 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 county seems to be changing, right? And you would expect that, um, you know, especially California being what it is, that as people want to move out of the cities because they don't like the um the result of crime in their areas, they move someplace else, but instead of appreciating where they're moving to, they bring their attitudes and their worldview with them. And so it's probably not too much of a surprise that they don't put together the fact that these attitudes are what made it so that they wanted to leave where they were. Yeah, no, that's that's true. That was even reflected in the most um, recent election as well. When you look at the poll results, I looked at them and I thought, boy, too many election cycles before that's that's just not what would have happened here and so yeah i think uh lots of lots of people moved up here during covid and uh it's definitely there's uh, we don't have to go very far for a mission field anymore that's right right so did the pub owner uh or the restaurant owner has he reached out to you in terms of uh, i'm sorry we did this um we still want your business or does it look like he doesn't care um, I don't, I don't think they really care. Yeah. I don't think they really care. Like I say, he was, he was friendly and friendly enough to us out there. He, um, he videoed us, um, videoed us with the drag queen dancing in the background and such. So he was, he was, he was friendly enough, um, in that regard, but no, I don't think they really, I don't think they really care. I think they'll probably do it again. I, I see. would imagine. I see. Okay. Yeah. So so let me get a little personal here because um, my listeners won't know that I knew you as a young boy. We've known each other a long time. We have, and I've seen you grow. And I've seen you go from an accomplished musician, an accomplished music professor at a college. What prompted you to go into ministry and start the church that you now pastor? That's a, that's a long, long story. Um, there's... In the ancestry of my family, there are a number of pastors. Um, in fact, actually, my my great my great grandfather was Van Til's cousin. And, oh, and, okay. And when, and when Van Til was overcome and was just going to thinking about quitting the fight and just being a country pastor, in in Van Til's biography, it says that uh, my great grandfather gave him a kick in the rear and said, <laughs> "Get back into the fight. The, the world needs you." 
in the fight. So, so there's a, there's a long line of pastors in the background. I remember even as a child saying to my grandfather, hmm, I think maybe I'm supposed to be a pastor and him giving me the very wise advice. Only do that if there's, if there, if there's nothing else you can do. In other words, this, this is a calling, um, make deadly sure that this is what you're supposed to do. And so, you know, over the years, I have pursued other things, pursued, you know, martial arts and had a successful career there and in business, but mostly music has, has been the thing. And I was an elder over at our church in Sonora, which um a very, that's Oak Hill Church in Sonora, very faithful church, wonderful pastor, wonderful group there. And it was, it just grew, which is very odd for um reformed churches today. It, we outgrew the building. And we're too, so we had a congregation, congregational meeting. What do we want to do? Buy a new building, build onto this building, plant another church. And, and though everyone was very reticent about splitting because we loved each other deeply, as deeply as family can, we decided that was more along the lines of the New Testament model. And we had 50 or so uh, people over here in Calaveras County. And so I, I was the elder who lived over here. So I was just helping that getting going. And then, um, yeah, I just, it just one thing led to another and now I'm the pastor of that church and, and so grateful to be and, and can look back on my life and see all of those teaching the jobs that I have had and leadership jobs I've had. God was preparing for, for the pastorate and it's, uh, it's the favorite thing I've ever done and hope I do it till the day I die. Okay. And I'm wondering if you think that rather than as a young man, um, in your early twenties, deciding I was going to be a pastor. Do you think that your experience in music and martial arts and other things you've done helped you to have a perspective that allows you to truly shepherd people in a way you might not have known they needed shepherding if you hadn't had these other experiences? For sure. I, I, for sure. I, I think, um, I think sometimes we think, well, if we send a young man off to seminary, when he comes out and graduates, he's ready. And, you know, I think we need to re, we need to rethink seminaries in that regard. Seminaries are, are high level grad schools and they're, they wonderfully prepare the mind, but really preparation for the pastorate. There's a lot of life experience that's involved in there. And there really just needs to be a lot of the local church being involved. We need to take these young men for a season and have them sit in on uh, session meetings and have them go along on counselings. And there needs to be a, um, there needs to be the raising up of, uh, of pastors, I think more organically out of churches. And, and I think there's something to be said for lots of life experience. Um, especially in this day and age before you, I, I know for sure, um, certain events like what just happened this last week. I know for sure that, um, being a fairly advanced martial artist and having stood toe to toe with big men and punched them and had them punch me in the face, that adds something to your, um, you know, that God uses that to put something into the stew that makes up a person that you, you're not as worried about people being aggressive towards you. So yeah, things like that. Life experience can flow into a, a, a pastorate. And yeah, I, I know in my case, um, had my path not been what it was, I would probably be a disaster as a pastor. <laughs> Well, one of the things that I think just by hearing your story and lots of people have stories, um, the discipline that's required to be a high level musician, in your case, it was a violinist to teach people starting from at various ages, young people, older people, and then the whole martial arts thing. It's not that when you encounter a situation like you did most recently that you were ready to fight. It's that you weren't afraid if a fight came to you. Yeah. And, and not even, I, I think there, I didn't even think along the fight lines. I think the, uh, the, just the, just the willingness to go out and, and be bold. I, I think in my case, um, God, God definitely used my martial arts instructors over the year to, to make that happen. When I'm actually witnessing with people on the street, that's why it's really good to have a good team around you because if I can describe it as, at least for me, there's kind of a teaching bubble that happens 
where I just, I, I get into a bubble with the person I'm talking to and I, I am not aware of anything around me. And as a martial artist, that's never how I, that's not how I walk around in the world. I'm constantly aware of things around me, but I could trust that the Lord is covering us and that there are people around who are, you know, watching someone who might want to walk up on the side and take a poke at you or something. And mm-hmm. I can just get into that safe bubble and look into someone's eyes, tell them I love them, tell them God sent me here for their soul can just get into a bubble with them. And so, yeah, there's the, the, I say, I think that the, for me anyway, the martial arts, its benefit is not so much that I'm worried I can defend myself on this. I'm happy I can defend myself in the street, but just that initial impetus to, okay, here it goes. I'm going to go, going to go out and talk to somebody and probably the music as well. I mean, when you walk on a stage in front of, you know, 2000 people, that's an overwhelming fear, but you have to do it if you're a musician. Right. So, yeah, I mean, there may be listeners out there who have various backgrounds and it may just suddenly come into their mind. Oh, I can do this sort of thing. Well, I've been, I've been trained in this already. And yeah. it's, it doesn't seem like it would have anything to do with this, but it does. It, God exactly. Knows, God knows what he's doing. Yes. Yes. And I like the emphasis on a team that um, I know a lot of people have a desire for being a good witness, but um, even Jesus sent them out two by two. He didn't yes. say, go out and do it on your own. Um, you need that support, whether you have tremendous success or whether you have a lot of opposition. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think building your team, if you, if someone, if the listeners want to do something like this, building your team is really important. Like I said, we had, um, we had ladies along who were beautiful singers. And, um, you know, there's one moment when I was witnessing to a man when I, I, I started to see breakdown in his eyes a little bit. And I realized what was breaking him down as much as what I was saying was that in the background, there was this beautiful duet coming from, from two girls sing, singing. I forget what song they were even singing, but it was, it gave me the, the goosebumps just to hear it, you know, that there was this, there was this, covering of worship music that was on top of this presentation of the gospel and and whatever dark powers were met have messed with this man's mind they were they were they were very distracted for a moment and so having on that team singers and then there were other gentlemen on the team who are um extremely good at if i was going to put it in these terms at overwatch they're very discerning. They can, they can kind of read what people are like. And if someone's hostile is coming up and they're good at diffusing that. So yeah, a, a good and varied team um, is, uh, is a must. And yeah. it, it's going to look like people from all ages. I mean, the little, the little 10 year old was doing just as much for the kingdom as, as, you know, someone on a speaker proclaiming the gospel. Yes. Yes. Well, Brooke, I know that uh, we had to bookmark this time because you're going to go off and teach right now because you have many hats that you wear. Um, if people wanted to get in touch with you, I guess they could go to your website. What is the address for the website? CalaverasPrez.org. Calaveras, C-A-L-A-V-E-R-A-S-P-R-E-S.org. CalaverasPrez.org. And yeah, they would be able to... Um, they could, you know, find a link to um, sermons. They could just contact me or the elders there as well. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good and useful site. Yes, and um, with people traveling to go up to ski or whatever, maybe it's not such a bad place to stop along the way that before you hit the slopes, you would, get to fellowship with other believers. We would l- love to have anybody come by. We have, uh, we actually have some associate members all the way up in Canada. We have viewers in different countries as well, just as they, they can't find churches or their churches were closed in COVID. Um, so yes, everybody is, everybody is welcome for sure. That's very good. Well, Brooke, thank you. I'm uh, encouraged with the work you're doing and the resolve. You're not, you're not going out there to pick a fight. You're going out there to help identify the fight, the struggle within people and being an alternative witness to the the grace of God that's available to them if they just surrender their own autonomy, I guess would be a good way to say it. Yeah, I, I often, I'll say to my students often that, you know, a reformer doesn't pick a fight, 
but a reformer will have fights come to them. I mean, it's, it is, it is the nature of the job. It's part of the job description. If you're actually trying to reform this world for the kingdom of God, you're going to receive opposition. Christ promised us that that would be the case. That always has been the case. And you should just anticipate that and you should rejoice. You know, when people, you know, persecute you, when people are, um, saying all manner of evil against you, rejoice, dance, dance a jig. Right. <laughs> if you, if you're, and I, I would just leave with this. If we're talking about points of reformation, these are the things that I think I want, I would like to see people doing. You need to build a godly family. You need to marry young. I was, I count people marry young, have lots of babies to counter the culture of death. Um, it, parents, fathers, disciple your families well. Work all you can to build purity of churches. Church, your churches need to have pure doctrine, pure administration of the sac- sacraments, good discipline. Churches need to be discipling their men. Um, you need to just people out there. You need to sing daily and sing joyfully because really, you know, our, our, our praises resonate in the throne room of God and, and he's an infinite God, which means they resonate infinitely. Whenever a little child says, you know, this little light of mine, that that resonates in heaven and that the demons hate that sort of thing. So singing joyfully with your family, you need to be praying constantly, right? Martin Luther's famous quote that he prays two hours a day, except when he's really busy, then he prays three hours a day, <laughs> right? You need to just be building incredible fellowship. I think it behooves churches to be really building their businesses um and 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 working with other Christians because gradually businesses will be shutting Christians out. Um so we need to be building structures, an alternate structure, and just in general long for the future. I'm a post millennial. I have a very optimistic view of the future. I think we should be building for the two future, fighting for the sh- future. We should be showing hospitality for the future, educating our children for the future. I think we should be loving our wives, respecting our husbands, shepherding our children for the future. It's a hopeful future, and uh, I can't wait to see what happens. Well, very good. Thank you, Brooke. Listeners, it's calaverisprez.org, so you can go to the website and check it out. And, you know, they even have their um, emails and phone numbers there, which is very unusual for um, a church these days. Sometimes you feel like it's more difficult to get to a pastor than it is to, you know, go to the national security team in Washington or something. If you have any questions or comments about this or any other podcast, you can always reach us at out of the question podcast at gmail.com. And once again, thank you, Brooke, for joining us. My pleasure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Out of the Question. For more information on this and other topics, please visit calcedon.edu.